All right. Now let's look at the configuration. The first key piece is the item category, right? This is what has triggered this entire cascade of things. So, how do you need to set your TAS item category? Billing relevance is F. Right? This is the only key difference. Billing relevance F. Now, what does F mean? Order related according to the invoice quantity. This is strange, right? Order related. You want to build this document according to the invoice quantity. What do I mean by that? Why do you want to build it according to the build quantity? Invoice here represents the purchase orders invoice receipt. It's not a sales invoice. It's the purchase orders invoice receipt. So what's meant here is that there is a particular quantity that's being invoiced here, right? So let's say the customer has asked for a quantity of six, right? The vendor has only delivered five quantity and that's what he has invoiced us. Now in the customer facing invoice, we can't invoice him for six, right? Because the vendor said that he has only delivered five, short picking or short delivery. So our customer facing invoice has got to be based off of how much has been invoiced in the purchase order, right? And that's what F means. It's a special billing relevance in the item category that bases the quantity off of the purchase order's invoice quantity, right? F is the billing relevance. And this is the only key change in the item category. The bulk of the changes are actually in the schedule line category, which we're going to see in a minute. And like I said, make the item category group as BAMS if you want to do it the standard way. And OR plus BAMS is TAS. Right? So this is all standard. If you want to do your own Zs, you can very well do it. The item category is where, you know, the bulk of the changes or the conflict changes are. Well, you don't have to change if you want to use your standard schedule and categories, but since you'll be using your own schedule and categories, this is where we specifically say that for if you use this particular schedule and category, what is the purchase requisition type that is triggered, right? So when this sales order is being converted to a purchase order via a purchase requisition, what is the document type that is NB, okay? What is the item category? Third party, account assignment. Everything that you see in the purchase requisition is controlled off of the schedule and category. Also, on top of that, there is no availability, there is no product allocation, there is no requirements that are transferred to MRP because there's no need for requirements, right? We are not procuring it and storing it in the plant. The vendor is going to deliver it directly to the customer. Because of that, there's no need for requirements to be transferred to MRP, there's no need for availability check to happen. So for a third party drop ship transaction, the magic happens on the schedule and category, right? This is where the bulk of the config is. And schedule and category determinations is based off of TAS plus any MRP type. You can configure it the way you want. It's going to determine CS schedule and category. So this is all standard, nothing out of the blue here. Now the rest of the steps all the way until invoicing, maybe except for the invoicing quantity bit, everything else is MM, right? You can change some things here, but that's a topic that we don't, we're not going to discuss at this point. For example, if a goods receipt is required or not, like a phantom goods receipt. You might want to do it under certain circumstances. If you want to do it, it's all an MM change. You can do it in the account assignment category, right? Same thing with the account assignment, third party, item category. The previous one was the account category. This is the item category. This is where you control what is possible and what is not. Like goods necessity is possible or not. Inventory management can be done or not. Valuation can be done or not. Right? So account assignment is mandatory here because the sales order is going to eat the cost. You can't basically procure it like a non-stock item, like an expense item. You can't do that. Somebody has to eat the cost and that's going to be your third party sales order. Right? That's all MM, like I said. Don't have to worry about that. Now, there are some other things that are automatically happening behind the scenes for you. 
just because you have done a TS, TAS, everything else is taken care of. So what else is taken care of? So let me tell you what else is being taken care of. The quantities, materials, any other texts, like special instructions, you know, bubble wrap this particular piece of accessory. All that stuff is transferred over from the SO to the PO automatically. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do anything manually or you don't have to do any special configuration for that. Right? Also, the customer's address is automatically transferred to the PO as a delivery address. Okay? And any other delivery nodes, like I said, texts are automatically transferred as well. So there's a whole bunch of data transfer that's happening behind the scenes. And you don't have to worry about it. SAP automatically takes care of that. It also takes care of certain things like what if you change the customer address? You know, does it get changed in the purchase order? It does. You can try it. Not after a certain time, not after the purchase order has been delivered or invoiced, invoice visit has been done. But before that, any address changes in the customer are automatically transferred to the purchase order. So there's there's a whole ton of things that is happening behind the scenes without you knowing it just because you have configured your item category and schedule in accordingly. So this is the only piece of config that you have to do. Let's go back once again. Step number one, item category, right? Billing relevance. We have seen what is F. Step number two, step number two is schedule in category. The schedule and category is where the bulk of the config is from an SD perspective. It controls the purchase requisition type, the account assignment category, and the item category in the purchase order. And it also ensures that availability check does not happen, nor is the requirement transferred over to MRP. Then the rest of the config, like I said, is all MM. What you do in the account assignment category, what you do in the item category, is all mm you can change some of the things but most of the things cannot be changed except for one of few things here there like if a phantom goods receipt needs to happen nothing else can be changed and sap automatically and once that's done sap automatically takes care of all the data transfer that needs to happen from the sales order customer facing sales order all the way to the purchase order right things like materials what has been ordered by the customer in what quantities has it been ordered any special instructions are there what is the address that it should be delivered to all that stuff is automatically transferred over to the purchase order. sometimes the changes are reflected as well right not all of them for example texts are not reflected but the customer address changes are reflected quantity changes are reflected right and you also get the actual quantity that has been delivered and invoiced back to the customer because the item category has been configured in such a way. So there's two-way data communication that's happening between two separate things, sales order, purchase order.